I'm Matt Wilcher, and I'm joined by my co-host, Leah Jackson. Hey, guys. Um, our guest tonight is a prolific member of the esports community. He first entered the esports scene via his passion for Valve's Counter-Strike and later joined Got Frag, a company that was later bought out by MLG. As he didn't want to relocate for the job, he decided to move on in his career and focus his efforts on evolving production in the competitive gaming community. This led him to start a competitive gaming show with Marcus DJ Wheat Graham and Rod Slasher Breslau called Live on 3, which is approaching its 100th episode. Later, he was approached by Evil Genius's CEO Alex Garfield to help run the pro gaming team. As the current COO of the organization, it's his job to handle the day-to-day -day operations of the company and its players. He also started his own pro gaming portal, One More Game TV, featuring tons of engaging esports entertainment like the hit web shows Kings of Tin, Inside the Game, Live on 3, and Weapon of Choice. We're so extremely, extremely happy to welcome Scott Sir Scoot Smith as our very first guest to Behind the Screens. Welcome. Yay. Well, wow, you could just talk about me all night long. I'm just, 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 keep re just keep reading that. The same thing over and over. That was fantastic. Wow. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, it's great to be here. I, I mean, again, uh, obviously, I, I know you, Leah. So, um, and to have, for you to ask me to be uh, like your first inaugural guest on this really cool concept of a show, uh, really, really excited. So, so thanks. Okay. Well, Absolutely. we're really glad to have you on. Absolutely. So, let's just get right into it. Let's do it. So let's do it. So Scott, tell us where and when were you born? Uh, I was born in Detroit, Michigan, uh, on an August day in 1966, August 26th to be exact. I'm a Virgo. My favorite color is blue. Coincidentally. And, weird. Oh yeah, that, that is kind hmm. of coincidentally. Yeah. So tell us a bit about your childhood. Uh, um, yeah. You, yeah, you want to explain to your audience what this show, how this show is so different? Like, you're asking a lot of non, sure. like. Star Matt, crap. why don't you go ahead? I'm sorry. Um, yeah, uh, I was reading the chat, uh, so I got a little confused. So, uh, um, sorry. So, tell us about your childhood. Uh, no. Did, did I just screw that up so oh, terribly? Okay, never mind. Okay, uh, let me explain. Let me explain. Let me. Explain. I'm so sorry. I was I was getting distracted by chat. No, it's all good. So what we're doing here is this is a show called Behind the Screens, and we're going to be talking to members of the right. gaming community, and um, and we're going to be asking them not about specifically what they're working on right now, but kind of going more in depth and learning about how they got to where they are now. So um, and we're basing Scoot's the show uh, partly off of uh, behind the or not behind <laughs> we're behind the screens inside the actor's studio. Uh, where James Lipton really delves into the personal lives of these very famous actors. And we're trying to do the same thing for esports. Esports right. and the gaming community in general. Right. So, with that, tell us about with yourself. That. <laughs> okay, so, well, uh, you know, obviously, I've, um, as I said, I was born in Detroit. Um, grew up mostly in Detroit, like three places, basically. My childhood is like three little sections. Um, Till about first grade, if you will, whatever age that is, I live, was born and raised in Detroit, Michigan, and the family moved to Dayton, Ohio, or outside Dayton, Ohio. Um, I lived there till I was in the fifth grade, and then in the fifth grade, 1975, 76, moved to Incline Village, Nevada, which is a town in Lake Tahoe, and went to high school there, finished my, my teenage years in Lake Tahoe. Um, then that was kind of the end of my childhood. Graduated high school in 1984. Yeah, 1984. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. yeah, pretty much probably before anybody was born. Anyway. Definitely before I was born. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's my childhood. Fun. In um, so locations at least. So. <laughs> do you mind telling us what your parents did? Yeah, um, my father was in the um, hospitality uh, and hotel business, so both in the meeting planning side of it, um, large-scale group events. He worked for some big meeting planning companies in the Midwest. Um, it's kind of how I started my, uh, my old career of doing meeting planning. And then he was also in the hotel business, so he was general manager and did various things at various hotels um, throughout his life. So kind of in the hospitality business, basically. My mom did all sorts of th things from school teacher to artists, to owning retail shops, um, to then being a substitute teacher, 
uh, accountant, kind of a little bit of everything. Wow. Yeah. That's fun. So do you have any siblings? I have two older brothers. What um, are their names? Tell us about them. Um, I have two older brothers. Uh, the middle brother is Kurt, um, and he uh, is it, kind of interesting. When I tell you what all my brothers do, you'll see that none of us have real jobs in the, in the, <laughs> in the, in the, in the traditional <laughs> sense. So my brother is a um, – He's in the outdoor gear trade, so he's a he's a he sales rep for several uh, climbing gear companies, rope company, shoe company, etc. Um, used to be a pro climber, so like when I look at kind of what we all do with this pro gaming thing, he kind of used to do that in a similar way as a climber. You know, you get a harness sponsor, you get a little bit of money for travel. They are, have competitions, they have tournaments. So that's what Kurt does. He now reps all the stuff that he used to get as a player, if you will, as a climber. Um, lives in West Virginia in the New River Gorge, still climbs every day. Um, and my older brother, uh, the oldest one, Mark, is a, uh, a yacht captain. So he is a, a freelance uh, certified captain of yachts that, you know, expensive. People with their big old toys have them move their <laughs> boats around, captain them down to the islands wherever the boat needs to go. He hops on and, uh, and, uh, and takes the boat. So none of us really have nine to five, like go sit in a cubicle – kind of gigs and never really have we've all had kind of these kind of passion um fueled jobs and someone's asking in in chat if he climbed el cap yeah kurt kurt's climbed el cap he's freed the nose he's done all sorts of stuff in yosemite so if you are if you're familiar at all with rock climbing is just google kurt smith the general that's his name he's <laughs> fairly fairly popular like climber if you're in the climber scene you know um anyway Right. And sticking to your childhood, who was your best friend when you were a kid? Uh, and, and again, I, if I look at like those phases of my life where I lived, I had, I guess, a couple of them, right? Um, so uh, in, you know, in Ohio, it would be the Coopers and Kenny and his whole family that lived across the street, kind of, were all our best friends. Um, I was really, that was my you know, youngest formative years. Obviously, Detroit, I don't really remember much about in the sense of having friends. Um, and then in high school, uh, my best friend was this guy named Brian Casper, who's like now in a, like in a local rock band and, you know, uh, yeah, not a gamer. Although we, <laughs> although we played a lot of games back then, video games. Yeah, did you play a lot of games when you were growing up? Yeah, always a gamer. Um, always. Uh, from, you know, I, I can even remember back in Dayton, Dayton, Ohio, we'd ride our bikes down to the little gas station. They had a pinball machine. We'd put our quarters in. We'd play pinball. Um, uh, had all the Ataris. Had, you know, the Intellivisions, you know, handheld Mattel football games. Um, had a TRS-80 computer. It was my first computer. Commodore 64. You know, so definitely always a gamer. Always a gamer. What was your, what was the first game you can remember loving? Oh shit! Um, <laughs> God, absolutely! Like, can't wait to play it again! Like, holy shit! Um, probably Zork. Probably <laughs> Zork. Um, uh, just exploring that, and again, if you're not familiar with what Zork was, it's a text-based, you know, mud. So you know, you're standing in a meadow. You can. Do you want to go N, S, or East? You go N. You're outside a graveyard. You know, all, all up to your like imagination, right? Um, and then uh, next after that, I mean, the one that really got me here and has kept me here in, in this world is Counter-Strike. So modern day game, Counter-Strike. Um, game of my youth, like, that got me into gaming, Zork. Do you want to tell us sort of the path that took you from Zork to Counter-Strike? Um, I mean, again, always been a gamer. So, um, again, just as I was growing up, you had to go somewhere to game, um, you know, before even... I think we got our Atari in the 80s, but, you know, there were, you know, arcades. You know, the fighting game community talks about, like, no one gets them because they're from the arcades. They're from this different, mm -hmm. like, real, like, I don't want to use the word thug, but, like, it, it had an environment to it, right? Not hostile, but tense. It's you know? definitely uh, way different there than in the scene that, you know, the StarCraft scene, for example. Exactly. So. You know, you can't comp compare a LAN to walking into a, a local arcade and putting your quarters up. There is a different vibe right. there. So yeah, yeah, we used to go to arcades and I, I remember even in high school, I remember one time I was, I, I worked in an arcade like giving change and shit and I had the keys and you know, we would sneak down there at like two in the morning and go in the back door and like 
flip just the machine lights on and not because we don't want the cops to like know that we were in there <laughs> after hours and shit. Battle Zone and all sorts of games. Um, so I always played them. Um, and then uh, I'm, in, I'm into PC games. It's the 80s. Um, leads, you know, into games like Alone in the Dark, the first Dooms, all these things. Eventually I end up like playing Half-Life which I think anybody who had a computer at that point was playing Half-Life, the greatest single-player game of all time, some would still say. Well, Half-Life had all these modifications that blew up around it um, because, you know, you could, you could mod on the engine, and they would support it. You know, there was no Steam or anything like that, so it's much easier to, you know, grab their stuff, make your own servers, do your own thing, um, and let people play your game. This little mod of Counter-Strike comes out. So mm -hmm. beta one day one, I download this thing, and I've been playing some TF. Um, so I already started to play not so much single-player stuff, but more like, oh, there's a competitive element to this. There's people playing each other, and there's no monsters. There's no dragons. It's this team against that team. Really liked Engineer, liked doing those kind of things in Team Fortress. This is like Quake yeah. World Team Fortress back in the day. Mm -hmm. And then this Counter-Strike game comes out, and it, it literally just grabbed me. And, and I'm sure I'm not alone. It's just, mm -hmm. just the concept of it, of like, so team based, so having to work together, clear objectives, uh, the you know the money system. And at that point, it was hostages. You had to go get the hostages yep. back, or if you were the, the bad guys, you, you had to make sure that the hostages didn't get taken yeah. back. You know, um, so at that point, it was kind of like just, and it was different. It was so so different than anything else out there. Um, uh, and and yeah and yeah and that and that led me to learning what clans were and people were playing each other every Tuesday night on the OGL and if you beat other people you were cooler and people <laughs> thought you were cooler um, and, and that just led me to you know the, the, the tournaments and I ran a little team called UGP that led to CPLs that led to the Got Frags and you know everything else you said in my bio. <laughs> and, I mean I, I still think I'm cool whenever I went around Counter-Strike so. Oh yeah. <laughs> I was playing There's last nothing week. there is not I mean and again like like the modern era of FPS gamer is used to like instant regen or, or being able to run and grab a health pack or run up to a wall and heal yourself on a, on a, on a unit, right? Counter-Strike, you're fucked. So if you're the last guy left and you've got like 12 health and you know that there's three CTs and you've got to plant this bomb and you're sneaking down the hallway, if you, your heart starts pumping. That, that's, <laughs> that's, that's, that, that's that like that, that Jones you're looking for, right? And if you obviously plant the bomb and you do your job, well, you're like the cat's meow, but if you fucking get sniped or whatever, mm -hmm. then you suck, you know, so, and that game also, there's no instant respawn, so it's like a double, like, your life is on the line, and you've got no health regen, right, so if you die, you're really fucked, because if you die early, you're waiting, um, and, and again, you can't run around the corner and, like, wait and go, okay, good to go again, <laughs> right. you know? Do you think that, um, that any game can come, now, can compare to your passion for Counter-Strike back then? Um, I, I think so. Like I would say, not as a player, any, but as a, a fan and as a spectator, several other games have certainly grabbed my, my like excitement for the competitive side of it. I love watching StarCraft. I love watching Quake Live, uh, or any Quake version for that matter. And I love uh, watching fighting games. So, and I don't play them. I mean, or I play them very, very casually. I should say, if I play them at all. So, I don't like play them like I played Counter-Strike. I'm not addicted in the, in the, like, okay, let's play again, get another scrim, let's go, 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 go. <laughs> but um, I definitely, you know, find myself watching the, those games a lot, for sure. So. Uh, with, with regard to the way that a lot of people feel about gaming and how that affects kids, um, how, did you, uh, w how did you feel uh, you did academically as a kid? Um, I did fine. I mean, I, I, I definitely, again, I, I think I predate the era where there was enough computer game distraction that it would have fucked up my studies, right? Like, I, I didn't come home and I, I couldn't be distracted by a smartphone or uh, Facebook or MySpace or any of that kind of stuff or tweeting or, like, texting my buddies. So um, even our gameplay wasn't as, like, we didn't live in this thing, right, like today's generation does. I don't, um, so, like, I never got yelled at by my mom, like, why are you still playing Atari basketball? Go do your homework, right? Mm -hmm. uh, my parents were always very supportive of whatever their sons did, whatever we all did. I mean, I just said what my other brothers ended up doing for their jobs or for their living. Um, as long as we got the shit we were supposed to do done. 
So if I was supposed to be doing my homework, that had to get done first. If, I was, if it was Saturday and my chores were supposed to be done, that shit got done. And then you could go outside and play war or play, you know. But again, we went outside and like ran around with guns and shit and bow and fake bow and arrows and played cops and robbers and cowboy. Like I'm, I'm that old, right? Um, <laughs> so uh, you have the little stick with the ball that you had to totally. like tap it. <laughs> I, I, I still remember like the day I got like this plastic M. 16 like replica right a couple of us got this gun and it was it like you thought you were like the cool like you had to be really careful when you jumped into the dirt because you didn't want to scratch it but it was like <laughs> like it was like a badass looking fake fake gun um now you probably it's probably way illegal to carry one of those even on the street cops would think you're a real person and shoot the kid or something but back then you could have toys like that so um yeah so uh, another question about growing up, who is your idol? Uh, who did you look up to the most while you were growing up? Who growing up? Um, or today? Hmm. I always, it, this is, this is not someone I wanted to ever like grow up to be like, but I know growing up I wanted to be like Burt Reynolds, but that's not, that's not like wanting to like be a fireman or something, right? So, or an astronaut. But like when I was growing up, the guy was like in Smokey and the Bandit and all the, like he was like the coolest guy ever. Um, but not a role model per se. I just like, oh, I'd like to be like Burt Reynolds, man. That guy's cool as shit. Um, let me think here. Um, I, I don't know. I think I had some really cool teachers in high school that I kind of looked up to and kind of mentored me. Um, it was like my English teacher, Connie Henshaw. Um, I had a couple of really good um, coaches in high school. I wasn't a player. I was a manager, um, and I'm not afraid to admit that. I think that's why I end up, I'm doing what I do now, actually. So mm -hmm. I was a student manager for our sports teams. I actually carried that into a scholarship at UNLV and did it for the basketball team. But some of those coaches, you know, and watching how they motivated their players, and in that sense, how they kept me engaged, uh, I, I think left some lasting things with me. Um, and I, I don't think I even noticed that until I started really actually working with EG. Um, uh, but that makes it all any sense, you know. Um, Let's go back a minute, because you, cause you mentioned that you had some teachers that were mentors for you. Can you tell us about how you did academically and, you know, yeah. what, what you liked in school and what you didn't like in school and, you know, all that yeah. stuff. Um, I would say I was an A-B student. You know, I wasn't, definitely wasn't straight A's. I, I probably got a C here and there if I was, wasn't engaged in the class, but I would say A's and B's through my high school career. Um, I, I went to uh, a really small school. Um, I went to Incline High School, which is, again, is in Incline Village, Nevada, which is in Lake Tahoe, which is in a very small touristy area. So my, my graduating class was 70 people. My high school was 400 people. Um, so if anything, I would say that for a lot of us, school was too easy. You know, um, it was easy for me. I, so the, the teachers that, that I liked the most were the ones that challenged me and not meaning like here's some more stupid homework, but like made you think about shit they were t teaching you not just memorize this shit, there's a test tomorrow. And, and I think we all probably have had teachers like that that are just trying to get it into your system. And then there's those that are trying to get it into your system but also teach you to think for yourself so that you, you have some other stuff coming out of school. You have some skill sets that are not just knowing how to do math, right? And I had a couple teachers like that. Um, so, yeah, but you know, again, I, I, was, I was probably lazier than I should have been in school. I should have maybe studied more. I probably could have got straight A's, but like, um, yeah. Um, I was a, very engaged, like I said, so I, uh, you asked the other question was what, was I, what I do in high school. So I did a lot of stuff with sports, but being really small and scrawny, and I'm 5'6 now. So, you know, think of me as a freshman in high school, right? <laughs> Not any taller. Um, so, uh, but I wanted to be part of it, right? Like I wanted to be part of that. You know, I wanted to help. Um, so I, I, again, very small school. So I was the basketball manager during that season. I did some baseball. I did some football. Kind of did it whatever the season was. Um, and then I also did a lot of drama stuff. I did, uh, I was in the theater classes. I directed our senior play. And that's probably why it's so easy for me to talk. Like people are always like, wow, hey, you, you don't get nervous. And I, and I think maybe that's because I just did this in high school too. Like I was on stage and did silly shit. Um, and again, Incline High School, very small school. Like I, I, I talked to people that went to schools that like their, their class was like a thousand people. 
And my, that's like four times the size of my school, which is a totally different growing up experience, period, right? <laughs> um, so, yeah, that, you know, that was my high school experience. Um, Do you wish that you went to a bigger school? Um, yes and no. Um, I liked that, and it's kind of that double-edged sword probably. I liked that you kind of knew everybody, but high school in its own right is like a sea of its own like growing up issues, right? Um, the smaller the school, the less chance that whatever you screwed up on or whatever your friend did wrong of him having any anonymity, right? And getting, <laughs> you know, like it, right. it, it's when everybody's in everybody's business in a small school, it's even tougher to grow up, right? And that's, you know, I didn't have anything that like blew my doors as a kid in that sense, like scandalous, but like it's just, you can't disappear in a small school. And, uh, right. you know, and kids can do that in a bigger school. Maybe that's bad. Maybe that's good. I don't know. Um, uh, I, I loved, again, smaller school, meaning I knew all my teachers. I could talk to them all. I wasn't in a, a class with, 75 guys in my history class the teacher can't give someone you know uh some personal time so i don't i don't know what i missed i really don't i guess maybe football games and sporting events would have been much more like collegiate like it, they would have been bigger like hooplas right um so i don't know um so know were you are you still super into sports um i would say not so much anymore um probably not so much anymore i watch a lot of sports when they get to playoffs depending on the sport, mm -hmm. um, and I'm kind of a, a, a Phoenix Suns fan, but it's kind of hard to be sometimes in our little town. I love Steve Nash, like nobody's business, but, uh, but other sports, I, uh, I mean, yeah, I watch all my sports here now, you know, and they, yep. they have guys inside servers playing computer games. <laughs> <laughs> so have you kept in touch with anyone from your high school that time of your life? Yeah, both uh, both high school and, and college, I, I have some buddies still. Um, and again, that's kind of one of the beauties of Facebook. I literally have been able to reconnect with a lot of people that I thought I would never find again. Um, so yeah, it's kind of neat, you know. And I, and I th then I think a lot of them look at what I do, and you know, because they're they're you get your accountants and all your normal stuff that the people grow up to be, right? And they see my Facebook posts, and they're like, mm -hmm. "What the fuck is this guy doing?" You know, because uh, it's obviously very cryptic if you're not familiar with esports some of the yes. shit i post you know how um how did you kind of go from the small town to where you are now sure um so uh lake tahoe uh led to unlv um to study hotel administration hotel and restaurant uh, administration um, kind of following in my father's footsteps, um, in a way. And, uh, also led me there because I had a, a scholarship to go work for the basketball team. Um, and I was a Nevada resident, easy, good school to go to, great basketball school at the time, still is. So, it, and that's where I was going for the basketball, uh, to, to be a manager for them. So did that, um, ended up going there. Um, and you know, in all honesty, Vegas is a really hard place to go to school, um, and I didn't graduate. I'm not, a, I'm not afraid to admit that I don't have a college degree. I am a really intelligent guy, and I spent enough time there, and I wasn't learning anything. Like I, My parents were funding some of my activities, if you will, because I had a scholarship for some stuff, but my, you know, obviously parents pay for some shit in college. And I, I was like just taking classes that I wasn't learning shit, and I knew I wanted to get in the hotel business, and I knew that my dad didn't have a college degree, and he was the general manager of a hotel, which is kind of the ultimate you can be in the hotel business, kind of, in a way. And I was like, I just need to go do this. I don't need a degree for this. I'm not going to be a doctor. I'm not going to be a lawyer. Um, the basketball thing's cool. I'm having fun in Vegas, but I'm, I'm not I'm, – I'm here for all the wrong reasons, right? And I'm a smart enough guy to know that. So why don't I just get the fuck out of this and move on with the next phase of my life? So I bailed, um, and I immediately went to work in the hotel business in Colorado uh, uh, and doing all sorts of shit from being a bellman to – banquet waiter to banquet setups to front desk work to front desk manager to all like all different up the chain stuff and then I finally kind of started doing um, event logistics which is you know you get uh, meeting planning companies get hired by big corporations coca-cola IBM's to plan their big large events um, and then they hire guys like me to come help run that big event what trade show product launch whatever um, and so I started doing that hopped on the road and Literally did that nonstop till I was able to start getting off the road to do this. 
So little town in, in Lake Tahoe led to big town in Vegas, led to a ski town in Colorado, because I lived in Breckenridge <laughs> for about 10 years, where there was a ski bum slash travel guy. Um, that led me to Arizona. I, was, I wanted to keep doing the job, but I wanted to be closer to an airport, because I was two hours from an airport. You fly a lot when you do travel. Um, moved to Arizona, lived with some buddies here, um, and then shit slowly led me to more and more <laughs> gaming, less and less travel for logistics. Skier or snowboarder? Skier. Skier. Although, Unacceptable. No, no disrespect for snowboarders. Got good buddies that snowboard. Um, and, yeah, no disrespect for that sport whatsoever. But definitely more of a skier myself. Definitely. Um, again, going back to your, uh, the way that you were raised, were you raised uh, religious? And if you were, did that continue on throughout your life? Um, I wasn't, um, I was raised Catholic, I guess, uh, but, uh, kind of, kind of at the behest of my parents' parents. Um, so we would go to, uh, you know, church on Sunday because grandma wanted us to go, not so much that mom wanted us to go, right? Um, and then we kind of got to an age where, uh, they let us make the decision, hey, you guys want to go? And we all basically went, nope. Um. <laughs> So we kind of stopped going. Um, again, my parents were very much like, here's, here's this, here's your choices, what do you want to do, right? They're very open about that, and very informative to us, and didn't, for, didn't, didn't force feed anything down our throats as we grew up, which um, has made us all writing really independent guys. Um, so, uh, yeah, and so after, you know, once we were, it was our decision, I never, I wouldn't say I never really went back. I, I think, I believe... You know, I think my Facebook quote might still be like, the God I believe in isn't short of cash, which is a quote from a U2 song. Um, I, I believe in some stuff, but like, I just don't believe in a lot of the organized religion stuff um, and having to pay. And, like, so, and, and one thing I try not to discuss is politics and religion. So I will answer the question by saying I, I wasn't raised very religious and I'm not very religious. Well, we're going we're gonna to put it to you and ask, okay. you know, how are you raised politically? And then we'll get off these heavy subjects. Um, I mean, anyway, again, we, I mean, I, uh, same thing. Um, debate has always been very, very big in my house and, and open discussion of stuff, right? Um, so much like religion was always discussed, you know, politics of the day uh, could be bantered about the dinner, dinner table. Um, I would call myself a Democrat, um, but I vote for the person. I don't vote on the party line. Simple as that. Um, but have I voted Democrat lately? Yeah, for sure. Um, uh, I think, unfortunately, you know, the country we live in is fucked up in so many different ways that I don't care what party. I mean, it's beyond that, right? I mean, yep. I don't care who ends up being the president, whether he's my guy or your guy or your guy. His job's fucked. He can't get anything <laughs> done. Um, uh, and it's just an, it's, it's, it's like the worst job in the world. So, uh, yeah. So, but again, not a very, very hugely political guy. Like, have I watched one of the debates? Nope. Read about him afterwards. Kept up on that kind of stuff. Um, uh, I find my best, uh, news source to be the daily show and the Colbert report. If that tells you anything about and me, read it, uh, read it and a little bit of, uh, uh, Bill Maher. So there you go. Okay. Well, um, I believe that we're going to be moving into a break at the moment. Uh, we have a break in the, uh, in the questions at the moment. So we are really lucky here at STEM TV to have made a partnership with Underline Entertainment. Okay. Uh, and they made the intro music for this show and they are going and they gave us a clip of their newest uh, of their newest parody uh, that we're going to play right oh, sweet. when we get go into the break. Um, it's a parody of Eminem's Guilty Conscience. It features tempo, suspense and in control. Um, and we'll talk about it after the break. Sweet. See you later. Sweet. Yeah, See you I got to meet the stream so I can watch this. Meet Dan, 26 years old. After losing match after match in his division, something smells awfully cheesy when his first pro builds a pylon outside of his opponent's base. Once again, his conscience comes into play. 
not listen to me While he's macro and free, proxy a pod line and slip in some DPs Now all you gotta do is A move and he's so screwed Yo, he said have fun, don't be so rude You shouldn't have to choose to win, that's not fair Yo, just look at his frank, you think that I care? Cheese this bitch right here on the spot bed Till he rages out and rips out all of his damn hair Man, did you see what happened in bit by bit? No, but I seen the seven racks TLO just did Shit, you trying to do anything to prevail? Man, fuck that, cheese this bitch BM and bail Meet Brady, a 39-year-old retired Brood War pro After coming back to the scene with the release of StarCraft II He sends a worker to scout around his opponent's base to find a spawning pool completed and six zerglings running into his base. What the f And we're back. Um, so you guys got to hear a little clip of Guilty Conscience, uh, the Eminem parody that Underline Entertainment is doing. Um, there's no video for it yet, so for the people that were talking about the overlay, that was meant to be there. Um, and if you watch next week, if you watch this show next week, you're going to watch the debut of the full video and the full song before anyone else gets to see it. So be sure to tune in next week, uh, even if it's just for that. So back to the interview, I guess. I got people tweeting me pictures of Burt Reynolds. This is great. <laughs> <laughs> Damn right, man. Smokey and the Bandit, greatest movie ever. God. Right. So let's get right back into it. Can you tell us, you know, aside from how much you love Burt Reynolds, um, okay. tell us, you know, where, where you're... Was your were your family members gamers as well? Were your brothers gamers? Were your, did your parents play any games? Um, yeah, actually, um, it's definitely safe to say that I come from a gaming family. When I, I and again, I, I predate computers, so like we're talking board games, card games. Like uh, growing up, like very much we gamed as a family, you know. Um, and you could you could always bet on my middle brother Kurt getting really pissed off because he was the sensitive one and like flipping the wrist board over um, <laughs> and storming out you know um, you could always count on my dad like getting screwed in dominoes or something and having to keep drawing and being really mad about it um, but al always gaming to the point like I can remember uh, we got in this board kick phase um, and my mom wasn't working at the time 
and and again, I think my mom's greatest joy was when we were all old enough to play with her, right? And we weren't just like shits on the floor, right? Um, <laughs> and I can, I, I would, we would come home from school, and so we lived in Ohio, and we had a really, really long driveway to our house. Bus would drop us off, and we'd start walking down the driveway, and like mom would see the bus pull up and see us start walking down, and you'd look up in one of the windows, and mom would be holding a game board, and like it could be Clue. <laughs> It could be risk. It could be monopoly. Like mom was ready. Like, come on, you fuckers, get home. I'm ready to play, right? And we, you know, so we'd always game. Um, That's but, awesome. It's so cool. Uh, and, and again, we still game. You know, over the holidays, my brothers were here, and we were risking it up and playing cards and all sorts of shit. Um, and it, uh, it, I think probably much like most families, we can like drill down our biggest like dramas of family time to like what game were we playing what were we doing what puzzle were we working on like you know um one of the coolest stories um again i mentioned earlier that i had a trs-80 right which those that don't know is like a very old computer uh made by radio shack or by tandy um and it is all one unit it's like a molded like space age thing right it was part monitor came down and the keyboard like and it was all like molded in like an L right like that <laughs> and then next to it you sat your your drive device well you, the, the tape drive was literally a cassette tape just like you could put in like Duran Duran or yeah I'm using an old band too and, and listen to it this thing played the program and stored the program right you put the tape in it would attach to the TRS it would play it like and it would like fucking Magic happened, right? <laughs> Off the cassette tape. So, uh, and, and this thing also had like a big floppy drive. Back then they were floppy drives. Uh, and I brought home this game called Haunted House, right? Um, and again, it was all text-based uh, adventure games. So, you know, you're standing in the lobby. Do you want to go up the stairs? Do you want to go north, south, east, or west? So I install it, right? Um, and I'm trying to put myself at an age. Probably 14 or 15, maybe? Um, and it's, you know, it's nighttime. It's not quite past my bedtime yet, but it's like seven, eight o'clock at night. My mom comes rolling into my room. She's like, what are you doing? And I'm like, oh, I'm playing this game, you know? And again, it's all text on my screen and it's a green screen on black. So it's like, it looks like the matrix. Like we would, we would think <laughs> now. Um, and she sits down next to me and she's like, what, what are you doing? And I'm like, well, this is what I'm doing. You know, this tells me what to do. And I'm explaining this to my mom. Right. And, and she's like, oh, <laughs> go north. And I'm like, oh, man, right? And sure enough, engaged now. And she starts playing it with me, right? And, you know, we're, we're playing it together, right? Um, you know, and I'm like, no, no, I was already there. Shut up. We're going south. You know, the typical, like, this is this gamer dynamic is starting. Um, so, we're, and we're having a blast. Like, this is, she's like, this is really neat, you know, because we're like, we're figuring it out. My dad comes trundling in. And now it's closer to like 9, 10 o'clock. He's going to bed. I should be in bed. Where's his wife? Um, and, and he comes in, he's like, what are you guys doing in here? You know? Uh, and you know, mom's like, shh, 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 we're playing. Uh, shut, sit down or shut up. I think she might even said, sit down or shut up. Um, so he sits down and we were explaining the same thing. You know, this is how we play. Uh, da, 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 we're in a graveyard. Um, and, and he's not participating. He's watching, right? And her and I are, are doing our thing and we're going back and forth and we're backtracking. And, and he's like, well, this is stupid. And we kind of both look at him, and he's like, what? He's like, you guys don't know where you're going. You don't know where you've been. You know, <laughs> you need a map of something. You know, and I'm like, there's no map. Like, this is what it is, you know? And he's like, hang on. He leaves, right? Comes back, and my mom also was uh, architect slash house designer, did all this kind of stuff as well. So she had drafting paper, right? You know, the paper with little squares on it. Oh, my gosh. Comes back, right? Sits his ass down, and he's like, all right. I will map. And he <laughs> starts drawing little boxes. And it's like, okay, where, where are we? Right? Don't go anywhere. Don't stop moving. <laughs> where are you? you know, okay, okay, we're in a meadow. I, I don't remember where we were. He draws a square, right? And he's like, okay, meadow. Okay, which way? And my dad, very logical, very anal. That's like, why he was in the meeting planning business. Probably why I'm very like, logical like that as well. So he wants this thing to be like done right. Like no more fucking free ball in here, folks. <laughs> so he's like, okay, we, and which direction can you go? And I'm like, we can go north, south, or east. So he's like, he's making an N. He's making an S, right? And he, he literally starts mapping the game for us. <laughs> Played the game for right. weeks, all three of us. Like I wouldn't play it without him. We'd wait till we were all done after dinner. Then we'd play the game. Um, and my mom and I did a couple other games after that, but like 
Then years later, she ended up with like a Mac Apple II or something. And I remember we had a little side scroller game we played together and shit. So <laughs> always, um, and I know that was a really long story, but uh, end of the but day, it was great. Very, very supportive, you know. And we always, obviously, when I was growing up, there was, no one was ever like, "I want to be a pro gamer, Dad. I'm going to be a pro." Like, like there was, that debate never happened in my house. Um, uh, but I, I remember when I first started to get paid from Got Frag when it wasn't a hobby anymore, and this had turned into some sort of job, right? Um, mm-hmm. And I was making a little bit of money in this thing. And I remember I called my mom, and I'm like, guess who's making money in fucking video games, right? <laughs> yep. Uh, uh, and, you know, and now you can be a pro. You can be all sorts of things in video games. I mean, you have a career in video games. Um, so, yeah, always very, very supportive. Um, so everything. could you tell us, you know, is it, they're so supportive of you. How did you manage to get, you know, from one place to now being the CEO of Evil Geniuses? Um, well, okay. So uh, we'll fast forward. So I'm in Colorado, and then I've moved to Arizona, and I'm still doing the full-time travel thing, right? Uh, I've now found Counter-Strike, and I've realized that there's competitions, there's leagues, there's tournaments. I've found these online conversation tools like ICQ and IRC and like I found this community of gamer, this new community of gamer that isn't my buddy on the couch next to me. Um, and again, via Counter-Strike, I realize, uh, you know, Counter-Strike leads me to caring what's going on in the Quake world because it's blowing up at the same time. Um, and uh, I, I, I bump into a, I, the first day playing this game, Counter-Strike, I bump into this guy named Skits, this, this kid in Southern California. And him and his buddy Diesel Boy were uh, really, really good at another game called um, Action Quake. And they were it, it, it kind of a mod off of the Quake engine. I never really played it. But they had now decided that they were moving their team to this new game. Um, and in this server, he starts telling me, he's the one who told me about clans and a whole different mm-hmm. story. But he start, you know, we start playing and we start, you know, playing in leagues like Cal. And back then there was the OGL ladder before there was even Cal. And, and, and RITD, all these different leagues. That leads me to find out that there's places like CPL where actually you grab your computer and your monitor and you take all your shit into a ballroom and you play head-to-head, right? And you, 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 you trade porn and you do all this other shit. But <laughs> there's a tournament going on. So, you know, every year UGP would save our money and we would go compete and get our ass kicked by somebody good. You know, like we would play the, the TSOs of the day and the, the top European teams. And they would kick the shit out of us. And we were basically like that... Tuesday softball team is what I, what we all, how we always did it. Um, but by going there, I met the other people that were taking it a lot more serious, like the guys like Craig Levine, um, you know, Jason Lake, the guys that were being sponsors, the guys like Angel Munoz who were taking the idea of a tournament and monetizing it and, you know, throwing the competitions. Led me to the guys that got frag who were covering it like a sport as, as media, as, as an ESPN, if you will. Mm-hmm. And, and I found that I was incredibly like-minded with guys like Trevor and Lee uh, and Kuhn, the guys, and Jason Bass was there at Gottfrag, and like, I clicked with them. I'm like, okay, I know that I don't want to do this team thing. Like, I, UGP's fun, but like, that's not what I want to do, you know, um, which is kind of weird that I'm there now. But back then, like, I was like, if I want to dip my toe in and do something, um, I want to be with kind of one of the bigger fish. And so in the Counter-Strike world, do you want to run, help run a team that plays Counter-Strike, or do you want to help run the media organization that is considered the best English one and talk about all the teams and talk about all the events, right? It's kind of being a bigger, you know, do you want to, be for, do you want to work for ESPN or do you want to work for the Dallas Cowboys, right? Um, and at that point, I wanted to work for ESPN. So I got frag. At that point, work was volunteer basis, mind you. Um, but and we slowly built that into a legitimate business, uh, in the sense that you know we were making money, we could get paid. We obviously then sold our you know to MLG. Um, that uh, that led me to uh, to not having a job in esports. Um, MLG bought us, but then eventually wanted me to move to New York City. Um, I did not want to do that um, as much as I liked a lot of the guys at MLG and still still do. Just. Mm-hmm kind of wasn't the journey that I wanted my life to go on at 42 years old, 43 years old. If I would have been 25, I'd have been an opportunity of a lifetime to go work in video games in New York City with MLG. But, mm-hmm. I, you know, I'm sitting in a really nice house in Arizona that I own, <laughs> uh, square foot. You know, all the things that New York really 
MLG could not pay me. They'd have to pay me what, way more than what I was worth to kind of recreate this, so that it wasn't going to work. Um, okay. So I said no. Um, but all the time it got fragged, I was really good buddies with this really shy young kid named Alice Garfield, right? <laughs> Just trying to help his buddies out, right? Um, uh, and I, I can remember, like, and Alex is, it's kind of funny. Alex is the reason I went to, I was at Gotfrag. Alex was doing some side work at Gotfrag, kind of helping their media department get off the ground and, like, reviewing, like, frag movies and, like, putting them up with reviews and stuff. And he reached out to me one day and he's like, hey, you want to watch some movies and tell them what you think, you know, and maybe rate them, right? You know, give me, like, a, you know, a review. And I'm like, yeah, sure, no problem, dude. And, and that led me to like being in a couple uh, Godfrag Ventrilo uh, channels and, and guys like Jason Bass and Lee Chen and Trevor were like, what is Scoots doing in here? Because they all knew who I was, but like, because I was the guy on their forums telling them they were fucking shit up and why aren't you yelling? Like, there's very vocal, outspoken Godfrag forum poster. Very outspoken. But so they asked, what, what the fuck? What are you, why are you in our channels all of a sudden? I'm like, oh, Alex helped, asked me to help with media. And that led me to go, them going, do you want to help? I'm like, yeah. Mm-hmm. Let me do something. Ended up being all sorts of things. Um, but, but all that time at Got Frag, Alex was always like, hey, dude, will you help me? Will you help me with EG? You know, I want, to get a little, I want this to be a little bit more serious, but I, I need some help, right? Because at that time, EG was a Canadian Counter-Strike team. And he was always fighting for the sponsors that didn't care about complexity in 3D the two big dogs in the scene, right? And Mm -hmm. we were not the, EG was not the powerhouse that it is now, you know? And most gaming teams were kind of in one game. So like, it was Um, Counter-Strike. Now he had the the third best Counter-Strike team generally almost at all times. His his Canadian Counter-Strikers were damn good. And they always represented Canada, WCGs and all that stuff. But he was always kind of like, unfortunately for him, third fiddle. Um, (laughs) So I was always like, I'd always laugh at him like, dude, I'll look at your PowerPoints, I'll help you. And I did, you know, he'd send me his deck and I'd go, okay, tweak this, fix this. How do you pitch this? You know, I like Alex, always did. Um, but I was like, why? And, and, uh, I did, not to sound shitty about it, but I'd be like, dude, why do I want to work for you? I work for God Frag. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> right? Um, uh, and so it just never worked out. But we, were, we always were buddies, you know. Um, and then a magical thing happened, right? CGS happens. The two biggest brands in North America get bought by CGS. All their sponsors can't go with them. So everybody who cared about esports is looking to spend their money again, right? That doesn't want to put it into CGS, right? Doesn't want to give CGS big money. But you can't sponsor 3D anymore. Can't sponsor complexity anymore. You have to sponsor CGS. So Alex ends up like being like the cat holding the canary in his mouth, right? He now has the independent brand and can go knock on everybody's doors again, right? Because they're all free and clear and they all still want to spend their money. So he ends up going from being like the, you know, the third biggest to like the biggest. Um, and, you know, you've now seen complexity come back and Jason and Jason are building that bad boy right back to where it was, no doubt. But it left this That's- nice window for Alex to kind of sneak in and like pitch to people that weren't already sold. Um, so that happens. I leave MLG. I end up reaching out to, to DJ Wheaton going, hey, you're doing this show live on three, dude. Can I get on it? This is really cool. I want to get on it. Um, you need me. No one's talking about Counter-Strike. It's live on three. It's the, the, the name of your fucking show is based on a Counter-Strike start command, you <laughs> bastard. And I yeah. have this like, nice little engagement with, with Marcus, who I've known forever as well. And he's like, you absolutely should be on the show. Alex tunes in, realizes that I'm no longer with – because it, it kind of all happened at once. Like I, I got on uh, live on three and kind of announced that I was – I was no longer with MLG all within like two weeks. So Alex is like, oh shit, scoots, scoots. Hmm. So he reaches back out to me, Scott, now that you don't have a fucking job, you know, you know Alex, right? This, you know, yeah. He's he it away. Now you want to come play with me? I'm a bigger deal, right? And he's signing guys like Grubby now, and he's multi, you know, multi games, you know. Um, and I, you know, and I, it, it turned out to be a, like a really good, funny conversation with Alex, but I'm like, you know, you're absolutely right. Now is the time to join you. Um, <laughs> yep. And, and, it, and it was, right? I, 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 I weighed, my op- weighed my options when I came out, and I go, okay, well, back into media. Who do I, if I'm going to be in a media role, who do I go join? I don't want to work for a league. I don't want to do that. No offense to leagues. Not what I want to put my energy into. Or I probably maybe would have stayed with MLG in some regard. Um, so it was perfect. 
um, that that he came a knocking. Um, and I, and again, I just I could not be happier. I get to work, you know, between working with one more game and Marcus and EG with Alex. Like I'm the happiest, like luckiest guy in esports. I really think I am. Um, uh, two of the most passionate, uh, smartest, genuine guys. I think you know it in the business. And so again, it's just. It, it, everything in life happens for a reason, right? Um, and I, so I was meant to do that journey through mm-hmm. Gotfrag, through MLG, to get me to right here, you know? And you have a well, cat on. So I, I know. I'm watching a cat, and he's being very silly. <laughs> do you want to do the odd questions, and I'll do the even ones? Sure. So now we're going to, in the spirit of Inside the Actor's Studio, um, as that amazing story ends, we are going to ask Scoots 10 questions, and we're going to ask every guest that comes on the show the same 10 questions, so we get all sorts of different answers for the same questions. So um, to get us started, let me know, what's your favorite is there, game? Is there a timer or anything? Do I have to be nervous about No. Nope. Okay. No. No. Okay. My favorite game is Counter-Strike 1.6. What is your least favorite game? God, I don't. That's a t- I mean, I don't want to be politically correct about this, but like, I don't. I don't. I don't care about them. I just don't pay attention to them, right? So it's like one. Not like there's a game out there that just annoys the shit out of me because I just don't care about it. Um, I'm not big into MMOs, so I guess my least favorite type of game for me to, uh, is MMOs. I just I don't play them. All right, and what excites you about gaming? Um, two completely different things. Um, the immersion and the, the, the movie quality entertainment we now see when you play a video game. Like you're actually, in some of these single player experiences are literally like you could be in a Hollywood blockbuster like that's been built for you. Um, so like that immersion, that, 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 in Skyrim, like when you sit there for like five minutes and you're like, look at that fucking moon. Oh, <laughs> Holy shit. That's, you know, like just those kind of moments, right? Other side of it is the competitive aspect of having this futuristic platform. I'm not a big fan of games that are based on real games, like sports games. No, no offense to those that like sports games, but I like, I like my gaming to be something I can't necessarily do in real life. Um, although I do play some sports games in but not on a hardcore basis. Um, the competitive side of it. So the idea of like whether it's Counter Strike or League of Legends or Wow Arena or or Han or, or Counter you know Counter Strike or StarCraft Two, any of them. The other the other side of this new gaming thing where five guys can go against five guys. There's no imagination. There. There's no fantasy dragons. Like the 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 fields that are available to us to compete on uh, off of all different types of gameplay. Whether again League of Legends versus a StarCraft versus a Call of Duty or Counter Strike. Very, very cool, but totally different to me than like a Skyrim gaming experience. You've already sort of answered this, but what turns you off about gaming? Um, see, I don't, I don't know if anything turns me off about it because I don't like it. I just don't pay attention to it, right? What's something that turns you off about the esports community? Oh, well, that's easy. Jeez. <laughs> Let me just put that up on the fucking T-ball for me. Yeah. <laughs> um, I know. Um... Wow, there's so many. Um, Just I pick your favorite. The, 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 the thing that I the thing that, wait, the, my favorite thing I, I hate the most? Wait, I'm confused. It's my least favorite thing about the community. Yes. Right. Um, quick to judge, slow to research <laughs> um, would uh. be one thing. And I would also say, because I ranted about it today, the overarching sense of entitlement that people now have about all sorts of things in gaming. All right. It works. <laughs> so um, here's, here's a, taking a different turn here. What sound in gaming do you really love? Mm. When you, uh, man. Hmm. Well, my favorite sound would be whether I'm a terrorist or a, a, a counter terrorist, and it's CT's word. Bombs and defuse. I <laughs> so knew you were going to 
say that. <laughs> it depends I on what it. side you're on, though, right? Yeah. I knew that. I knew that. I was going to say. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and I assume one. the opposite is true for the next question. What sound in gaming do you hate? <laughs> yeah, well, just whatever game I'm playing, that what it sounds like when you die. That would be very safe to say that. When you whatever sound that you make when you die in that particular game I'm playing at that moment, I hate the most, for sure. What's your favorite insult to throw at your opponents? EAD. Okay, tell tell the audience what that means. Eat a dick. <laughs> right. <laughs> but I won't uh, tell you what it means. So like if I BM you, like that's my latest thing in quick lives, I'll just type EAD. Yep. So you either know what it means or you don't. Yep. You know, Same you know what it means, then it worked. <laughs> <laughs> What uh, profession would you do if you didn't have the one that you have now? Oh, God. You know, I, I would go back to like when I was talking about high school drama. I think I would, I would like to be an actor. I would like to be an actor. <laughs> what profession would you not like to do? I would not like to have anything to do with plumbing or sewers. If heaven exists and you could only play one game for all of eternity, what would it be? Ooh, God. God. See, that's a tough question without being able to ask more questions. Because, like, what if I said Counter-Strike, but I was the only one in the server because I was the only one alive and I was, I was like, like, no one else invaded. Let's say it it's, the, the, let's say it's the, the perfect scenario and you, you know, you have as many people to play with as you want. There's no lag. There's no nothing. You can, you know, what, you know, the... It's whatever you want. What game would that be? It would be. It would probably be Counter Strike, um, and um, yeah, it would be Counter Strike. It would be endless matches of Counter Strike <laughs> with nine other really really cool people. <laughs> Sounds perfect. Well, we are going to wrap up the show for this evening. Um, I really enjoyed it, and I hope that you all did. Uh, Scoots, do you have any uh, any shout-outs? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, first off, uh, shout-outs to you know everyone listening. Thanks for tuning into these guys' show. It's very cool. Um, shout-outs to you guys for doing the show. I think this is a really, um, you know, we've talked about, and I think a lot of people have talked about, like we need more content, we need more good content, we need more consistent content, and you guys kind of have looked at, the idea of doing a show, but you're not doing just an interview show. You're, you're, you're. I love the actor studio kind of take on this because, uh, like, I don't give a shit about me, but like, I want to hear some of my players and other players and other people answer some of these questions because this is the shit that I want to know about because I know what their favorite map is and what they think about Protoss and Zerg and PVZ. And, like, I, this is the kind of the neat shit, right, that fans want to okay. get to sometimes. Right. So I'm really excited for the show. Um, cause it has legs. Like you can ask these, sh these questions to a whole lot of people. Um, so shout outs, obviously all the EG, uh, fans and players and staff and all of our sponsors. Um, we obviously couldn't run, uh, the team without all of those things. Um, and you know, and same thing can be said on a little smaller scale for my, for the one more game team over there, uh, Marcus and everybody else, uh, and our sponsors of those shows. Um, I hope we continue to grow both those brands in 2012. Um, and, you know, as I say at the end of almost every Live on 3, uh, it, it, I don't care who you like or hate, whoever you do like, support them, right? So if you don't like EG, that's totally cool, but you love Team Liquid, then go buy their stuff. Go support their sponsors or Quantic or whoever. Whoever you do like, show them and show their sponsors because it, it makes it, – it's not like a football player asking you to tweet for, like, Wilson football. It's like – this shit works, right? We, we're at the level where this interaction between us and our partners, all of us, like they hear it, they see it, and they respond to it. So, you know, go, go support that favorite thing. You know, if it's these guys at Stim TV, you know, make sure you subscribe to their shows. Make sure you retweet when they tweet, you know. Every little bit helps. You know, my dad used to have this little board and on his desk, right, kind of like one of those little placards you put next to your name. And he didn't, he didn't make up the saying at all. But it, it, it said, if you're not part of the solution, you're part of the problem. Yep. You know? So somewhere along the way, we're, we're not where real sports can have apathy, right? So you know, be part of the solution in some regard, right? Um, because there is no 
There is no sitting back, and that gets back to this entitlement, this apathy, this gimme, 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 this demanding thing. Like, you're entitled to fucking nothing, right? You really, truly are not, you know? And so if you like what you're seeing, whether, it's, again, my team or G4, whoever, support them and let them know you're supporting them. That's it. That's my rant. Woohoo. Leah? Um, I just want to thank Scoots for being on the show tonight. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. And follow me on Twitter at Leah B. Jackson. Uh, I have a couple. Um, so Scoots Tumba wanted me to thank you uh, personally for, for coming on the show uh, uh, and uh, for everything that uh, you and EG have uh, done for him. Um, I want to thank our newest sponsor, Underline Entertainment. Um, yes. Thank you. Thank you so much for all your hard work. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, they, there you go. I, I just want to say, uh, the, uh, Will Baker and uh, uh, Eric, I'm sorry, I, I can't pronounce your last name, uh, Redondo, I hope that's right. Um, you guys worked, they worked so hard today to get us an awesome theme song. Um, I mean, they, they did all of that today, and it was awesome. Um, so thank you to them. Uh, thank you to the STEM TV staff for um, you know, making this show happen, and uh, you know, specifically uh, Simpatico and Tumba, and uh, also want to thank Clutch for uh, tweeting us about us and uh, talking about us on uh, his show. So um, that's all. Uh, I'm going to end this, every show on the same words, go merrily, and may all your attacks be crits and your loots be fat. Bye.